Yeah, well, sure, it's been very challenging, that's for sure, but not just for us as a, a football federation, a football association. I mean, everyone has had challenges here in Gibraltar and all over the world, so it has been very much a global pandemic. Having said that, those challenges are there to be met, and I think the Gibraltar Football Association have met those head on. Uh, but it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact of the collaborative approach and the approach that we've had with all the, the agencies here in Gibraltar and all our stakeholders. Uh, from the very off, uh, we've had lots of cooperation, not just from parents and from players, from the club officials, but <clears throat> I suppose more importantly, and I suppose uh, in terms of authorization, we've had great cooperation, great collaboration with Public Health Gibraltar and also with the GSLA. And without all those agencies, without all those stakeholders coming together, uh, we just wouldn't have been able to uh, put our protocols in place. Now those protocols and processes uh, took some time uh, to agree, but we managed to do that. Uh, I'm sure you can see around the stadium here when we were playing uh, for the last three or four weeks, we have had our temperature testers, our delegates have been working overtime, as it were, to make sure that everybody, is, all the adults, have been temperature tested. We've had our sand sanitizers, uh, stations at every entrance. Uh, and we've had the cooperation of parents and players and coaches as they've entered the stadium. Uh, and for that, we're eternally grateful. Uh, certainly, from our point of view, football just would not have been possible uh, to get back in place. So, yeah, we've had three, almost four weeks of fun-filled football. They've been played on a friendly basis. Uh, we have played somewhere in the region of 100 games at youth level, uh, but not forgetting, of course, we've also been able to put back in place our women's football at senior level, and we've also been able to put our futsal back in place. And again, games have been played. We've had many, many games uh, over the weekend. Uh, our futsal guys have all been very proactive, and again, all adhering to protocols and processes that Public Health and GSLA have led down. So yes, those have been challenging times, but we're you know, more than grateful for all the cooperation, but also grateful that everyone has been able to, in this difficult time, uh, really take some recreational time. And mental well-being, of course, is very important to us. And I think most people have really enjoyed the time that they've had over the last three or four weeks playing some friendly fixtures, both indoor and outdoor. Well, how pleasing is that to hear? Uh, because I'm sure, it, probably the general public don't realise that um, obviously we're accountable to our governing bodies in, at UEFA and FIFA. Those governing bodies provide most of our funding for us. Uh, so accountability in terms of growth, in terms of participation numbers are always important to us for our funding streams. But the, the, the surprising thing is, uh, in some ways, that the numbers have increased during the pandemic. Now I think that's possibly for two reasons. Obviously we, at the Gibraltar Football Association, we have been very proactive during lockdown, during people's furlough periods, in that we have been active online. We have been in constant communication with the clubs uh, by email, also by video link. I'm sure uh, most of the guys have seen uh, our video uh, presentations, not just on the website, but through social media. So even though we had a bit of a lockdown period and quite a substantial uh, period of time, we have been proactive and we have been in constant contact with our membership and I think that's been great. We've had a lot of online learning, uh, we've had some video uh, and some seminar and team meetings uh, and certainly by Zoom. So all of those I think have contributed to football not just taking a furlough or taking a rest, we've actually been very proactive. But I think the other thing of course is not to forget is that uh, in terms of the, the general public, our membership, they want to be active. Uh, many times I've been out on my bicycle or I've been out on the streets and people wanted to get back to football and I think there's been a resurgence of that. So maybe a combination of things from people wanting to be uh, more active, uh, certainly in the recreational field of football, but also just for their mental well-being, trying to get back into some sort of uh, recreational sport and we have tried to help them as best we can. Uh, so as a result, I'm glad to say that in terms of our numbers, uh, our numbers have increased in all facets. Uh, of uh, association football. The indoor sports, uh, our futsal numbers are up uh, by over 50, 60 members now. We have four brand new teams entering the league. Uh, in terms of our youth football, last season we had registered uh, approximately 84 to 85 teams. Now we have 94 registered teams in youth football. Uh, in our women's game, and particularly the girls game at under 10, from five years of age all the way through to 12 years of age, our numbers, believe it or not, are up 50%. So 
So that's fantastic news uh, for the growth of football within Gibraltar. Uh, and it's something that we're very grateful not only to our membership, because our clubs have worked very hard at that as well. But as I said before, uh, as a football association, we've been very proactive. We've been encouraging people to take up the sport. And now we see the fruits of our labour. So now we need to continue with that into 2021. That's terrific. I mean, what we tried to do was to uh, certainly take a strategical step in, in terms of football and delivering football to our membership and to the wider community. Uh, so what we've tried to do there is we've tried to encourage working in the community, not just with disability football uh, and not only through veterans and our charitable work, but also through walking football. And as a result, our numbers have increased uh, dramatically. We now have 34 uh, to 35 people playing on a weekly basis. Uh, these guys are aged between 55 and 81 years of age, which is terrific. Uh, and they're here, very proactive, working day, uh, week in, week out. Uh, they're enjoying themselves, they're recreating, uh, they're also socialising after the event and having cups of coffee at social distancing and so on. Uh, so that's great and they're having a really good time. So from our point of view, uh, we're more than uh, happy to encourage that. Uh, we've provided them with equipment, uh, even kit, footballs, bibs, cones, etc. Just to let them uh, have a really good time. Now, at some stage they will become competitive because the, the growth of walking football, not just here in Gibraltar, but also throughout Europe, there will be hopefully in 2021 some competition for these guys. Uh, and it'll be friendly competition, uh, may, maybe even here in Gibraltar, but also abroad. So yes, from our point of view, walking football has uh, just taken off. Uh, and of course, the in, in, not just in terms of recreation, but their mental well-being, of course, particularly during that furlough period and that uh, lockdown period, it was great to see our, our elderly people coming out and, uh, and, and recreating and playing football and enjoying themselves. Yeah, well, this is a very good question because, I mean, again, it would be remiss of me not to mention the staff that I have working in the technical department here at Gibraltar Football Association. I mean, all of the staff contribute because we are such a small association and everyone gives a hand and helps us work. But the grassroots team of Leslie Asquith and, and in particular our women's uh, development manager, uh, Laura McGinn, have been working many, many hours to promote women's and girls' football. So from our point of view, we're delighted. Uh, we've put a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of funding has gone into promoting girls football in particular. And it's fantastic to see every Friday, uh, many, many young girls aged between three, four, five, six, seven years of age, all working down on pitch three and pitch four, really enjoying themselves. It's really about being a fun, inclusive and safe environment for those young girls to work in. Uh, so that has paid off. Uh, our numbers have increased dramatically. Uh, not only that, but they now become, if you like, a little bit of a player pathway for the girls into our youth teams at five, six, seven, all the way through to 12 years of age. And now there's really where we've seen the growth. Now the question you've asked is whether we can continue with that. I think we can. I think there's uh, on tap, if you like, territory out there, particularly in our primary and middle schools. And that's something we'll be looking towards in 2021. But the growth of uh, women's football, the growth of girls' football, is definitely on the rise and we're more than happy, more than glad to support that whatever way we can. Yeah, another good question because uh, obviously uh, with Christmas break coming up, uh, we would be very hopeful to start our competitive leagues, maybe January. Uh, look, we'll, we'll take our guide again from public health and from, um, uh, from the GSLA. Uh, we're very keen to start our competitive leagues as much as possible. We have obviously uh, I've spoken before about this, about our friendly fixtures. But yes, we'd like to start competitively, get our futsal uh, working again, get our women's leagues, get our youth leagues all up and running every weekend. We have over 2,000 members who want to play each week and uh, we want to facilitate that. So on the one hand, yes, our leagues are very important to us. On the other hand, we have lots of other things coming up in terms of our schools projects. That's a very, very important, because uh, that's really where the next generation of football comes from and we'll be working very hard in the primary schools, in the middle school, Bayside and Westside, that will continue. And hopefully within the next uh, six to nine months, perhaps we'll have a full-time uh, schools officer working alongside our grassroots team with Leslie and Laura. So that's one aspect. Another aspect of growth we're looking at is our coach education. I feel that the basic pyramid 
for growth and basic pyramid for learning in terms of football will come from coach education. So although we've been very proactive during lockdown with our online learning and our online learning courses, we'd like obviously to bring the practical courses back. But again, that will be dependent on our public health and GSLA. But certainly there is a demand for that. People want to learn, people want to become more qualified in terms of their coaching licenses and coaching badges. And again, we're ready to go. The <coughs> Gibraltar Football Association are ready to, uh, if you like, launch our new C license course. And obviously we would like more people to be involved in our B license. Apart from that, we have also our youth competitions, hopefully. Uh, very keen to get our under 14, our under 15, and under 17 teams, elite teams, uh, working this, this uh, 2021. So again, another project for us will be to start our elite youth development programs. Again, we're just ready, we're in the blocks ready to go. Uh, and we would like to, again, to support those selection teams, those teams from anything up from 10 years of age all the way through to 17 years of age, competing not just here in Gibraltar, but also working on their techniques, uh, their tactical skills, and also their strength and condition and physical uh, expertise. So from our point of view, there's lots of exciting uh, things to come in 2021. As I said, we're in the starting blocks, we're ready to go, and hopefully everyone will have a fantastic Christmas uh, over the next couple of weeks, and then again, ready to launch all our new programs and our existing programs from January 2021.